Welcome back, guys. Thanks for taking time to spend a little time with me. I definitely appreciate that. And let me just let you know the scenario. You're looking at Landry Jones right there. Yes, guys. This is a CFM game, week 16. I have had to play with Landry Jones for several weeks now. My Pittsburgh still is a 6 and 8. <laughs> Terrible season, man. And the truth of the matter is, quarterbacks, you know, backup quarterbacks are definitely not your starters. They can't make certain throws. It's funny because I was even telling my opponent, my good buddy 205, a loyal uh, caller of Sim Standard Radio, I was letting him know, man, it's crazy because I have to scale down my playbook because Landry Jones can only make certain throws. Very crazy, guys. So I just wanted to give you that backstory. We're having a tough season, man. Hopefully we can get to the draft and we'll make another run next season. But guys, I want you to take a look at this catch. This is an amazing catch in terms of, you know, okay, going up to get it, but more importantly, the footwork. But what we're going to focus on here, and this is something I'm definitely going to pass on to the devs. You know, I talk about DB and wideout interactions, I mean, until I'm blue in the face. But I want to show you guys what I mean by taking it to the next level. You know, you hear us talk a, a lot about, you know, unchaining the animation and allowing these guys to do separate things. And, you know, speaking with the devs, you know, I was able to get more educated in that area. You know, it's not as easy as people think, you know, when you completely unchain sequences is not as easy as everyone thinks you know that's why most games still have sequences you know I, I guess what I would like to see in that case now you know until something like that is is actually very capable you know I would like to see now where the AI plays more a factor even when you have a sequence animation and what I mean by that is producing more branching animations you know being able to branch out of certain animations based on the situation look at this defender here now he's basically just matching a catch animation both of them are that's why you do see the change in the ball trajectory and things like that because we all know that the ball for the most part is still tethered you know to a catch animation and you know you have the dice roll effect to decide who's gonna win but I want to see that defender right Right there realize you know well, I can't catch it try to knock it down try to knock it down and you guys saw you know his positioning right there you can go ahead and rewind it and take a look at you know what I was saying but instead of staying in that catch animation now you should branch out of that and try to knock the ball down now I want you to look at the footwork guys as we wrap up this video this is outstanding I held the possession catch and I'm able to hold on to this ball. Me and 205 both was like, wow, when this happened, what a catch. You know, so you have to give props to this right here. You know, the way he's able to get that second foot down right there. I mean, it's crazy. You're going to see it very, you know, real briefly right here. You guys, you're going to miss it if you blink. But here it is right here. But, yeah, just wanted to get that point across, guys. I appreciate you watching. Let me know your thoughts. Hit Once that again, like button. Guys, Peace. Thanks for coming by. And if you want to interact with me live, Head on over to Sim Standard Radio every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, along with Smitty and Azure Effect. The call in number for the show is down in the description. Now, of course, for more content, go ahead and click the link above. And before you go, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys, until next time, lights out.